written under this trigonometric, which is very, very, very important. We call it quadrant. Quadrant. Now, the quadrant of trigonometric are of four parts. That it, it is four. Um, let me just make a diagram of it. Assuming here is the Cartesian flank of it. Here we call it the first quadrant. Here we call it the second quadrant. Here is the third quadrant. Well, here is the fourth quadrant. We normally take it like this from here to here. This quadrant is 90 degrees. This quadrant is 180 degrees. This quadrant is 270 and this quadrant is 360 degrees. The whole round. 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90. 180. In this first quadrant, um, let's uh, zoom in this first quadrant. The it is named as a, a right angle triangle where we have zero less than or equal to theta. If theta is our angle, less than or equal to 90 degree. That is any number in this quadrant is a number from zero to 90. Any number from zero to 90 is a number which is in the first quadrant. And in first quadrant, all the trigonometric ratios are positive. Sine theta is positive, cos theta is positive, and tan theta is positive. We have no problem with the first quadrant. That's why in some cases we call it A. It means all the trigonometric ratio are positive. Now in the second quadrant, it's a quadrant where we have theta less, 90 less than theta less than or equal to 180. Are those numbers that are more than 90 but less than? Now let's see quadrant. Quadrant of trigonometric is of four parts. Let me just make it in a diagram. Assuming I am having a diagram like this. This one is the first quadrant, this one is the second, this one is the third one, while well, this one is the fourth quadrant. Now let's first consider first quadrant. In first quadrant, from here to here is 90 degree, from here to here, 180, 270, 360. In first quadrant, we are having zero less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to 90 degree. It means it lies from 0 to 90 degree. Any number that is from 0 to 90 degree is in the first quadrant of a trigonometry. And also, in the first quadrant of a trigonometry, all the trigonometric ratios are positive. That is, sine theta is positive, cos theta is positive, tan theta is also positive. That's why sometimes we call the house A. First quadrant is known as A. That is all the trig ratios are positive. Now in second quadrant, it lies from 90 to 180. In second quadrant, all the numbers that are more than 90 but less than 180, they are in second quadrant. And in second quadrant, all the trigonometric ratios are positive except sine. Sine is only negative in second quadrant. But cos is positive, tan is also positive. That's why we call it S. S stands for only sign negative. In the third quadrant here is a number from 180 to 270. A number from more than 180 but less than 270 is in the third quadrant. And all the trigonometric ratios are positive here except tan. That is sine here is positive, cos is also positive, but tan is negative in the third quadrant. Now the last quadrant is the numbers between 270 sorry, to 180, 360. And in this last quadrant, all the trigonometric ratios are positive except cos. Sine is positive here, sine is positive, cos is negative, and tan is also positive. This quadrant is very, very important. In this case, we call it tan. Here, we call it 
A S T C. It means all here positive S sign negative T tan negative C cos negative for you to easily identify uh, the where the three ratios are positive or are negative. And you can just categorize it like this. A S T C. A stands for first quadrant. Whenever you see a number, you check. S in second quadrant is negative. T, third quadrant. T in third quadrant is negative. C, last quadrant. C in fourth quadrant is negative. This is very, very important. Now let's see the definition of the, uh, what do we call it, the quadrant. Let me take the second quadrant here. In second quadrant, you will be given a number which is more than more than 90 but less than 180 but but in trigonometry we normally used to express a number in its first quadrant so to express any number that is in second quadrant to be to look like a number in first quadrant we use this now for sine if you are having sine theta and this theta is in second quadrant to express it, you said is equal to you check sine. Sine in second quadrant is negative. We start by negative sine um, one eighty minus theta. The theta you are given, you subtract it from one eighty. Cos theta, which is equal to cos is positive. You just use cos. That is one eighty minus theta as usual. Tan. Tan also is positive, then you have tan 180 minus theta. That is to say, whenever you are given a number which is in second quadrant and you want to express it in its first quadrant, you use this 180 minus the values given. For instance, you may be given, um, um, what do we call it? Express, express cos one twenty. Cos one twenty. If you are given a question like this, the first thing you should do is you check this one twenty. Where does one twenty lies? You come to your quadrant one twenty. Is one twenty here? No. 120 is in between 90 and 180. So therefore, 120 lies in the second quadrant. And what next? The ratio given is cos. In second quadrant, what is cos? Is cos negative? No. Cos is positive. So I will use this. So this implies cos 120 is equal to positive cos 180 minus theta. And theta here is 120. Just subtract 120. So you are going to have cos 180 minus 120, which is equal to 60 degree. So you see now, from 120, which is in second quadrant, I, I wrote it in terms of its first quadrant, which is 60 degree. This simply means that cos 120 is the same thing as cos 60 degree. Now let's see the third quadrant. So in third quadrant, where theta is uh, greater than 180 but less than 270, we are going to have our sign. In third quadrant, sign is positive, so we go with positive sign. In case any number that lies in the third quadrant, you subtract 180 from the theta. Theta minus 120. In, in second quadrant, we have 180 minus theta, while in third quadrant, we have theta minus 180. Now, cos theta. Cos is also positive. We have cos the same thing, theta minus 180. The last one is tan theta, but tan is negative in third quadrant. We are going to have minus tan of theta minus 180. This is very, very important. Let's see the next quadrant which is fourth quadrant. So I call it the last quadrant. 
in fourth quadrant. So in fourth quadrant, we have sine theta. This equals to three. Sorry. If the theta is in the fourth quadrant, that is more than 270 but less than 360, we are going to have sine 360 minus the given theta. Cos, but cos is negative, you have minus cos 360 minus theta, then tan theta, which is equal to positive tan 360 minus theta. This is very important. Let's see this. Example, evaluate or simplify. Let's say A, um, let's say it costs, costs uh, 300. B, said um, sign, sign 225. Okay. Assuming, look at it, we have cos 300. First thing we should check is where is 300. 300 is in between 270 to 360. So that is the fourth quadrant. If it is in fourth quadrant, you just remember always be going with ASTC. Fourth quadrant, cos. Cos is negative. We have minus cos 360 minus theta. And our theta is 300. That is from the definition. Just subtract. This is to minus cos 60. So for any value here, for example, if we are asked to solve this one, what is cos 60? Go to your uh, special angle. Cos 60 is what? I think it's 1 over 2. So at last you are going to have minus 1 over 2. If you are having a calculator, you can check cos 300 using your calculator. It will give you minus 0.5. And also look at it, 1 over 2 is 0 0.5, which is the same thing. So now the next one is uh, uh, sine 2 to 5. Let's see it here. Sine 2 to 5. B. Sine 2 to 5. So where does this lies? It lies in the... Uh, but in the third quadrant, that is from 180 to 270. From 180 to 270. Look at it. So, and also in the third quadrant, sine is positive. If you check, we are going to have now sine 225, which is equal to sine, if you recall, we minus 180 from the given theta if it is in third quadrant. So we're going to have sine 225 minus 180, which is 45, and this is equal to 1 over 2 from your spatial angles, and 45 is 1 over root 2. This is the same thing, same thing. That means sine 225 is something as sine 45. Now, let's... Uh, this is uh, the quadrant and is very, very important. The next thing and important thing we are going to see now is uh, what we call um, compound angles. Compound angles. Confound angles. Confound angles. Compound means double. Um, to save time, I will just list the compound angles we have together with their definition, which is very important. Compound means when you are having two angles. Let's assume we are having two angles A and B. Then, number one, sine. A plus B is the same thing as sine A cos B plus sine B cos A. This is very, very important and clear. Now, if for instance, this is minus, that is sine A minus B is the same thing as sine A minus B like this. 
If it is minus, then here is minus. If it is plus, here is plus. Very important. That is to say, if I am having sine A minus B, so it's going to be minus B here. If it is plus, then it's going to be plus. Very clear. Now number two, we have cos A plus B. Cos A plus B is cos cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. Also, if here is minus, then here is going to be plus. That is to say in cos, if the initial is negative, then the result here is positive. But if the initial is positive, then the result is negative. Also very clear. Then the next one is number three, which is tan. Tan A plus B. This is the same thing as tan A plus tan B all over 1 minus tan A tan B. Now for assumption, if the initial is negative, so here is going to be negative, while here is going to be plus. If A minus B, then you are going to have tan A minus tan B divided by 1 plus tan A tan B. Tan A tan B means tan A multiplied by tan B. This are very important. So let's see, how are we going to use these six formulas given? Because there are six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see example. For instance, I may ask to find, example, find the value of sine, sine, uh, let's say 15, without using table or in sort form or in sort form the same thing without using table or in sort form now if we take a look at sine 15 sine 15 here is not a special angle and the only values we know that are given in special angles are 40 30 45 these are the three uh, numbers or angles I gave the special values of them. But sine 15 is not. So whenever you are given a number, sine 15, it is also in, in, in the first quadrant, but it is not part of the special angles. What you do is you just think on how to split this 15 into two special angles. Think two of these three values, if you add, you get 15, or if you subtract, you get 15. Now look at it. If I take, sorry, not 40 here, it's 60. If I take 45 minus 30, 45 minus 30 is 15. So I can now express sine 15 as sine 45 minus 30. So if I express this as 45 minus 30, it looks exactly like this one. I will take my A to be 45 and 30 to be B. Now let's see it. So this implies that sine 15 is equal to sine 45 minus 30. Or if I like, I, I can use 60 minus 45, all the same. 45 as my A. 30 as B. Now, sine A and B, A minus B. We have sine A, which is 45, cos B, which is 30, and if it is, if it is minus, it's minus here, minus sine B, sine 30, then cos A, which is cos 45. Now we just put down the special values of this. We are going to have Sine 45 is 1 over root 2 times cos 30. I may draw my angle here. If here is 30, here is 2, here is 1, here is root 3. Cos adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, of course, 
other side over hypotenuse is our other side over 3 over 2. Over 3 over 2. Minus sine 30 is 1 over 2 times cos 45 is 1 over root 2 from the spatial angles. So now we just simplify to see the result. Simplifying, we are going to have, um, look at it, 1 times root 3, going to have root 3. Over this times this, we have 2 root 2 minus, this times this is 1 over 2 root 2. So now the next thing is just to find the LCM. The LCM is 2 root 2 divided by, here is root 3 minus 1. So this is it, but this is not the end. According to sort, whenever you are having denominator, 2 as root in the denominator, you have to what? What we call rationalize. Rationalizing means multiply both here and here by the root term. So we're going to have times root 2 over root 2. If you multiply, you have root 2 times this, it's root 6 minus 1 times this is root 2, 2 times, the 2 root 2 times this, we are going to have 2 root, 2 root, uh, 2 root, 2 root 4. And root 4 here is 2, 2 times 2 is 4. So at last we are going to have root 6 minus root 2 all over, 2 times 2 is 4. Two of sine 15 in sort form. Let's see one more example. See one more example. Let's use tan to see how we simplify tan. And another example. Let's evaluate tan. Uh, let's say seventy-five. Yes, seventy-five. Seventy-five. Okay, it's seventy-five. 75 is also in the first quadrant, but it's not a special angle. So as we did in uh, this uh, 15, you think on the two out of this three, that if you add, you are going to have 75. And I think 30 and 45. 30 plus 45 is 75. So I can express this as, is the same thing as tan 30 plus 45. Taking 30 as A and uh, 45 as B. So this is the same thing when you are going when you are having plus you know it is tan A plus tan B all divided by 1 minus tan A tan B. So uh, our A is now 30 and B is 45. We're going to have tan 30 plus tan 45 all over 1 minus tan 30 tan 45. From the special angle, what is tan 30? And our tan 30 is this. We have our 30 here. We have 1, 2, we have root 3. Tan is opposite over adjacent, 1 over root 3. Opposite over adjacent. 1 over root 3. So tan 30 is equal to 1 over root 3 plus tan 45 is 1 from the spatial angle. Then 1 minus tan 30, 1 over root 3 times tan 45 is 1. So now let's simplify. Simplifying, we're going to have um, 1 over root 3 plus 1 over 1 minus 1 over root 3. So this is it. Here we find the LCM as well here. The LCM is root 3. Having root 3, we are going to have 1 plus root 3 all divided by that one. The LCM is root 3 also. We are going to have 1 minus, I'm sorry, root 3 minus 1 here. That is root 3 in 1, root 2 times 1, root 3, root 3, root 3, 1 times 1 is 1. And this is the same thing as 1 plus root 3 divided by root 3. If you reciprocate, you are going to have times 
root 3 over root 3 minus 1. So root 3 cancel root 3. We're going to have 1 plus root 3 over root 3 plus 1. So, but this is not the end. According to sort, we are going to conjugate this one to find the final result because if you stop here, you just did half of the work. So you have to simplify this one using sort method, conjugation of sort. Conjugate says just uh, multiply both the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. That is 1 plus root 3 divided by root 3. Okay, sorry, here is 1 is minus 1. You see, here is minus 1. Minus 1 times the conjugate of this one is root 3 plus 1 over root 3 plus 1. Then we multiply. 1 times root 3 here, going to have root 3. 1 times 1 plus 1. Root 3, root 3 times root 3 is 3. That is root 9. Root 9 is 3. Root 3 times this is uh, root 3. All divided by root 3 times root 3 is 3. This plus times this is plus root 3. Minus 1 times root 3 is minus root 3. Minus 1 times minus 1 is minus 1. So at last, we are going to have... Okay, 1 plus 3, we have 4. Plus root 3 plus root 3, we have 2 root 3. Divided by here, it will go. 3 minus 1 is 2. And I can factor out 2 here by saying 2 into 2 plus root 3, all divided by 2. 2 cancel 2, and at last we are going to have 2 plus root 3. 3 as the final result. This is to say term 75 is the same thing as 2 plus root 3.